Hi everyone, this is Callie. We're celebrating Alta News 10th anniversary today with a blog hop and today's video is going to be using the latest Craft Your Life project kit called Splendid Bouquet. There is a stamp, die, stencil set as well as a 3D embossing folder. So it includes everything that will help you create a textured and dimensional card. There is a large, beautiful image here, as well as many sentiments that are great for everyday use, as well as many occasions. There is that die set that also cuts out the large, bold words on the sentiment set, and there are five layers to the stencils. I'm starting off here by using that bouquet die and die cutting the splendid bouquet image. This is going to help me line up my image and stamp it perfectly. This is especially helpful if you don't stamp first and want to do a no line look with just the stencils. I'm using the stamp and stencil mat to hold that negative and the bouquet image. This is gonna keep that die cut in place so that I can position the stamp right over it for perfect alignment all the way around. Now I realize this isn't necessary. I could have just stamped the image first and then die cut it. So this was just how I started my process. So you'll see here in a little bit, I'm gonna struggle with pulling this up after I stamp so that I can emboss this image. So hindsight, if you are stenciling this without stamping first, then this is a great technique but I am making it a little harder for myself by die cutting and sticking it to that mat before stamping this image. I'm using VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, and I'm gonna peel the image off here and then apply some clear embossing powder, and then I'll heat set that, and that's just gonna trap that black ink so that we can keep a crisp image while ink blending. I find that when I ink blend over just regular black hybrid ink, it does dull it a little bit and so my image isn't as crisp. So I like to seal in that black ink before I do any stenciling and ink blending. I have the first stencil layer here and I'm going to start with a soft blend of a lighter pink. I'm using guava ink here from Simon Says Stamp and again, I'm just adding a very soft layer. I don't want it to look too dark. And I'm just gonna do that on all of the petals that are visible on this stencil set. Now you're probably wondering, what is the purpose of the negative around the die cut image? Well, because there are so many different images on each layer set, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't too sticky and I'm not gonna have a hard time shifting the stencil between each of the layers. So it's holding my die cut in place, but it's also providing more barrier between the stamp and stencil mat and the stencil so that I can move it around more easily. So I'm working my way through the layers here. This stencil is for the flower centers. I'm using some zest ink for the yellow. The third and fourth layers is where we start ink blending the foliage. And I'm using cabbage here as the lighter green. And same with how I started the flowers, I'm using a very soft blend on the leaves for this lighter green color. The stencil also includes the stamen of the flowers. So I'm using honey ink for this and it's just a shade darker than the zest that I used for the flower centers. I'm gonna finish the first layer of leaves here with the fourth stencil. I love that Ulta New thoughtfully separates images that are similar but close together so that you can ink blend with different colors if you want to. So that's why the flowers were separated into two different stencils as well as the leaves. Not only can you apply different colors, but it also allows you to add a gradient of colors for each individual petal and it helps keeps the flower a bit more interesting with the way that you blend. So I'm finishing up my flowers here with some details using the final stencil layer. I'm using a brighter and darker pink here for this layer to give it additional interest and details. This color is called Watermelon, and if you're interested in all of the colors that I use, be sure to check out the coordinating blog post and in the links below where everything will be linked for your convenience. This last stencil also provides the leaf details. So I'm gonna be using a darker green. This color is called Artichoke. And like with the pinks and yellows that I used, it is a shade darker in the trio of colors from Simon Says Stamp. Now that I'm done stenciling, I'm gonna peel away that negative and the stamped and stenciled image. Then to give this image a 3D effect, we're gonna be using the 3D embossing folder that coordinates with this image. I'm gonna line it up as best I can. You can adhere it down if you'd like. I don't use any adhesive inside my embossing folders because I don't wanna leave any residue behind. So I prefer to just line it up and then close it and run it through my die cutting machine. So you can't really see the 3D embossed image here, but when I flip it over, you can definitely tell that it is there. 
Now that we have finished our image, I'm going to set it aside and we're going to be working on a background panel. I'm using the same guava ink that I used for the light pink on the flowers and I'm going to ink blend a very soft gradient from corner to corner. So I'm blending pink from one corner going up so that it fades into white. Then to give the background some additional texture and interest, I'm going to be splattering. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that watermelon, the darker pink ink that I used, and I'm going to dab it onto my glass board there, add a spritz of water, and then I'm going to mix that for splattering. And what's great about using dye inks to splatter with is that it dries instantly and it always coordinates with the colors that you used on your original image. And I have to mention that it makes for very quick and easy cleanup. I like to have a matting around my card base, so I am cutting a quarter inch off this panel and it also cleans up all the ink blended sides so that you don't get that harsh ink blended line around the edges of the paper. You can go ahead and add adhesive to this panel and adhere it to a A2 sized or four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base. Then to adhere my 3D embossed image, I'm going to be using some 3D foam squares. That's going to ensure that adhesive sticks to the embossed back while giving your image additional dimension. Then to give the stamen on the flowers a bit more interest and shine, I'm using this Nouveau Glitter Drops bottle in Gold Coast. It does look milky at first, but it does dry clear and it just leaves behind some glitter that's perfect for adding texture and a little bit of shimmer to the flower centers. Last but not least, I'm going to be preparing a sentiment for the card. I have a piece of black cardstock in my Misty here that I am preparing with some embossing powder tool. And I'll stamp my sentiment using some clear embossing and watermark ink. And then I'm going to emboss this with some white embossing powder. There is a coordinating die with this large bold sentiment, so I think that's great. I went ahead and die cut the sentiment off camera, and to adhere it, I'm going to use a combination of 3D foam squares as well as some liquid adhesive. The 3D foam squares for the S and by the N and G there on sending so that it matches the height of the flowers that we adhered down. Then I'll use liquid adhesive for the other areas so that it can cling itself to the foliage that's nearby in its surrounding area once I line it up and secure it in place. And I could have stopped here, but I wanted to showcase some of Altenew's enamel dots. There are a variety of fun colors, but I am using the clear ones on my card today. There are three different sizes on these, and they do have adhesive on them, so they're super convenient to use. I put two at the bottom and three at the top, and then that finishes my card for today. I hope you enjoyed this project. Thank you so much for stopping by. Again, if you're interested in any of the products that I used, everything will be linked below for your convenience. And before I sign off, I just want to say again, happy 10th anniversary to Altenew. Bye everyone! Hi there, I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.